All right, guys, if you are here, then you are looking for just the installation process of the Liquifusion 240. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first steps you're going to go ahead and remove all the brackets on your motherboard because NRMAX is going to come with all of their own stuff. You're just going to have to put this back bracket in first. Um, it does come with the kind of screws that it needs. They're kind of short compared to other ones. So once you get those through the holes, you'll be able to get this guy up in there and make sure it all lines up on the holes. It might be easier to do this one screw at a time, but that worked out pretty good for me. Okay, once you get to this side, you're going to have two things you got to screw in here. For starters, you have these little plastic washers. And there's not much to them. They just help reinforce. And then you've got these bolts here, or kind of nuts type things. There's a little bit of a hollowed out section, and then there's a flat section. So you're going to want your flat section to go up against the plastic washer that you screw in. Like so. So yeah, once you get that in, you get your final step. Of course, you have your bracket here. And you just got to screw in the screw to the little mounting socket there. Mounting bolts, whatever you want to call them. Oh, there's mounts. Yeah, there's the mounts. And so these things can be a little tricky to screw in. So I definitely recommend normally having the case laid flat. But hey, it's for the camera. So yeah, you can just screw these guys in, get them all lined up, and you'll be good to go. I forgot. So if these things are tight and don't have any wiggle room, sometimes they don't line up right. So you might need to keep these loose until you get the top bracket in. So make sure you have, see now look, I've got a little bit of wiggle room in these holes to try to get moved around. I might actually need a little bit more than that. It's kind of a little bit of a pain thing. So see. This thing moves around in the hole quite a bit. You're going to need that amount of slack to be able to line up these other four holes. So don't tighten everything down too much until you get everything lined up here. And then once I've got my top bracket mounted and lined up, I will cinch down the back screws again. And we should be good to go from that point because these things just sometimes have this ever so slight difficulty of lining up perfectly. All right, so fans are pretty straightforward. So I would definitely say, hey, take a look at your radiator. Kind of get an idea how it's going to lay in the case. My radiator is going to go in the case like this. So that means that I want the wires to go out the back side, which means if I flip this radiator to install the fans, now the wires are going to be facing towards me. So yeah. And then I always like to do push configurations, kind of just personal preference. So there we go. Line that fan up just like that. And of course, Entermax has their nice little long screws there to use for the install. And so usually what I do is I just kind of get one of the screws lined up, make sure it kind of just goes in loosely. So that way it's easier for me to line up all the screws. So now I've got both of these fans in here. They're kind of loose, but they're not pushing against each other or anything weird that'll make it hard for me to install one or the other. And so now I will just gently, don't have to put too much pressure on these guys, tighten down each one of my screws. So I'm gonna go with the top mounted radiator option. So what I usually like to do is I like to just put two screws in the middle. I do one on one side. Oops, did this the wrong way. Hold on just a second. There we go. So I put the two screws in the middle. And so what's happening now is I'm just trying to get this one to thread this time. It's being a little wonky. You gotta kind of make sure everything levels out right. Because if the radiator isn't quite level, then your screw won't hit the threads right. And if your screw's not going straight down, it's just, yeah, you got to kind of hit all those little details all at the right times. Once I have two screws like that, 
then bam, radiator setting in place, hands free, I can get the rest of my screws now without having to fight with it too much. So right now I'm just pushing all of my fan cables in. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is I like to pull the cable all the way through, like so. Then, since I'm going to be using my motherboard control, I can grab my PWM fan connection and just bring just the tip through. And so once I get that tip to drop down and get it hold of my fingers, then I can look for a little low CPU optional for the back fan. And so that way I got my cables out of the way. So once you get this far, it's want to put just a nice little drop of thermal paste in there. I usually do maybe something that's about oh slightly smaller than a pea size for Ryzen dies. So I tried to get this to not go all over the place, but this is easier to do when it's flat. But the flat is sometimes hard because, yeah, the lighting is a little bit more tricky. Once you have it there, this is really simple. You're just going to line your block up. Get one screw in, the other screw there, and, and that's it. You're just going to cinch these guys down. I'd recommend going back and forth a little bit. Don't forget about your pump. It's not on the block. This is an RGB cable. So you got to find a pump header for this guy right here. And so what I usually do is, you know, I'll try to go through one of my cable management slots first, poke through there, trying to hide it, and then come back through on the other side to get it out. I actually got a cover on the back, so I'll take care of that later. My pump headers are right here on this motherboard. So guys, Enermax has a plethora of options to manage this guy. So first off, one of the really cool things, they've got a loop back plug that also runs power from just a straight connector like this. So if you need to just fill your cooler a little bit, they even give you some extra coolant. You can just plug this guy right in, power your pump up without any risk to your components, fill, done. So there's the first thing. Second off, all right, well, I don't really have a good pump header. That's okay, I don't care if it runs full speed. You can run the pump off of a direct Molex connector, which I'm not a big fan of Molex, but hey, still, that works. All right, I do have a pump header, and I would really love to use that pump header, but my cable is too short. Not anymore. They've even got a little extension cable, so you can make sure you can reach headers on your motherboard. <sighs> really good. All right, well, I only have one motherboard header to control my fans, and there's two fans. That's okay, they gave you a splitter. Yep, there you go. Control all your fans and your PWM signal one. Yeah, I mean, I didn't need it for my motherboard, but that's a great option to have. All right, so moving forward. You're gonna start out, you're gonna need to do the RGB controlling. So we've already kind of covered the headers, but here is the control unit for the RGB. So you've got your, your three cable connectors here and they plug in there and then you plug your fans and your pumps into these three connections. So everything will line up, work great. They're pretty proprietary so I doubt you're going to have any troubles with like getting confused. Do not plug these into a 12 volt uh, um, RGB header on your motherboard though. These should be addressable 5 volts so you would, could run the risk of burning some LEDs out. Alright, so you got this little tiny two pin connection on the bottom, little tiny two pin connector here. So these two guys, of course, looks like a match made in heaven. Oh, I love a good love story. And then that is so you can power all your LEDs. And we've got this nifty little SATA connection that you better run to so you can power all that brilliant lighting. Finally, oh no, what am I going to do? With all of this cable mess, oh, I want to be able to manage it and make it look pretty, but there's just so much. That's all right. Enermax included your choice of either short or 
long. Hey, there's another one. Cable management ship strips. There's four of them. You got two short red, uh, two short ones in red and black, and two long ones in red and black. Kind of cool. So granted, guys, this is mostly so I can show off my Cooler Master H500P, but I love all this cable management covering. But you'll notice I did not put the LED controller in there because if I want to change colors, I'm going to have to access these buttons. There's no remote on this, so you will actually have to set this from this little controller. Put this in a place where you can easily access it like I did. And there you go, guys. If you've gotten this far, then you have a nice, neatly installed CPU cooler. Let's go ahead and just do a quick wrap up describing what I think of this overall install process and how good of a job I think Enermax did. There is one thing I disliked about this install process and that's the fact that Enermax did chose not to use AMD's backplate bracket that comes with their motherboards. I really hate it when motherboards don't do that. And especially in this case, that bracket that they're using is just wide open, which allows the socket to kind of push out, in my opinion. Now, I've never had any problems with it. I've never had a motherboard break or crack or anything weird like that. So I'm sure it's not a big deal, but I really like AMD's backplate better than the bracket that comes with the liquid fusion. Wish Enermax had gone that route. Other than that though, Insulation was great. Not quite as easy as like some of the units I've seen from Asetek, but I'm sure they've got patents that no other unit could use that kind of install process anyway. This was still a really easy install process. Enermax did a great job. So guys, if you are wanting RGB lighting, I will have a video up along that way. And if you are actually looking for just performance and an award, well, then I'll have another video over here as well for you guys to check out. I'll catch you later.